Welcome to Biology Made Easy. Objectives. So, what are prokaryotic cells? This cell, if it's prokaryotic, this prokaryotic cell, it doesn't have any well-defined nucleus. The DNA is scattered in the cytoplasm, all right? And it doesn't have organelles except ribosomes. You remember ribosomes? Then eukaryotic cells, they have well-defined nucleus. DNA, they have DNA in the nucleus. And they have organelles, mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum you remember them you have organelles so you can take the opportunity to revise cells in lesson one so prokaryotes are organisms that have prokaryotic cells all right and they are bacteria cyanobacteria and then eukaryotes are organisms that have eukaryotic cells and they are fungi, plants, animals. You can have animal-like organisms or plant-like organisms. They are all eukaryotes. Good. Now you remember that in lesson one, we talked about all living organisms. The living organisms have DNA this is the DNA here, DNA. They have DNA. So living organisms or living things have DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. They perform seven life processes. And they have cells. All right? And so... Prokaryotes and eukaryotes have all these. They meet these characteristics. All right? Good. Now, there's also another body or structure of what? Called achaeotes. So we put here achaeotes. And achaeotes are viruses. Achaeotes are viruses. These viruses, they, they no cells, they have DNA or what is called RNA. And they also do not perform all the life processes. They only perform reproduction when they are on another living thing. We have prokaryotes, eukaryotes, achaeotes, all right? Now, today, we want to look at the viruses. Viruses are not counted as living things. They are also not counted as non-living things. They are achaeotes. So we want to look at them today. Before we do that, we are saying that viruses have DNA or RNA. So let us explain quickly what an RNA is. In our first lesson, we talked about DNA. You see that molecule there, very big, is responsible in determining all the characteristics of the organism. And viruses have DNA, but some viruses also have RNA. Now, what happens is that the DNA has the genetic information to produce proteins. All right, that will determine the characteristics. It gives instruction to the cell to make RNA. DNA is huge, stable. It doesn't change in size. It doesn't change. And it's in the cell. And it gives information, genetic information, to make a smaller molecules called RNA, ribonucleic acid. The RNA then moves in the cytoplasm and makes sure that the proteins that DNA want to make 
the RNA makes it exactly. So some viruses have the DNA and some viruses have the RNA. RNA is a smaller molecule, one chain, not a double chain. We'll look at the structures in detail in good time. And the RNA ceases to make the proteins that DNA determines that should be made. Achaeus viruses, some have DNA, a few have RNA. And those who have the RNA are called retroviruses, like the HIV. It's a retrovirus. When we come to look at how viruses reproduce, we will see how the retrovirus works. So now let's look at the structure of viruses. Now, viruses are very, very tiny. They are much, much smaller than bacteria. And they are filter passes. Filter passes because they can pass through um, filter paper, which traps bacteria, all right? They are all parasites. They behave as living things only when they are reproducing on another living thing. Outside a living thing, they become like crystals. They are host specific. It means that different viruses have different hosts. They, 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 and even tissue specific. This bacteriophage is a virus that attacks bacteria. Now, we want to look at its reproduction, how it lives. And we we'll use the bacteriophage as our example. They have all kinds of structures, you know. This is the protein called DNA. They have structures that are on them to be able to attach onto the host. All the viruses, look at all the different structures that are on their body, just so that they can stick to the host, attack the host. Let's look at the reproduction of their life cycle, and then we'll understand why they are so difficult and bad. And we will use the bacteriophage, all right, attacking the bacterium. Now let's look at its life cycle. This is the bacteriophage. It has its DNA. Let's make its DNA green. All right, so that's the bacteriophage with its DNA. And this bacteriophage is attacking a bacterium. It's attacking a bacterium. Now it sticks on the bacterium. Sticks on the bacterium. And what the bacterium too has DNA. So this is the bacterium with its DNA. All right. So this bacteriophage sticks onto the bacterium. And the next thing it does, the next thing it does is to push its DNA into the bacterium. So its DNA will be pushed into the bacterium. So that's the its DNA in there. And it will leave the shell. It will leave the capsid outside. Its DNA is pushed in. And then the next thing it does is to stop. The DNA comes in and stops the bacterium DNA from functioning. So now the, the viral DNA makes the cell to produce a lot of viral DNA. And so it will produce a lot of viruses. The cell gets filled with viruses, tiny viruses called virons. And then the cell will break and the viruses are released. And they will go to attack more bacteria. That's what viruses do. When the virus is a retrovirus, 
it has RNA. So this retrovirus, this is RNA. When it pushes its RNA into this cell, the RNA will cause the DNA of the cell to stop working for the cell. And the RNA of the retrovirus will cause the DNA of the cell to rather produce viral DNA. And soon the cell will be producing a lot of viruses will be formed in the cell. And soon the cell will burst and the viruses will be discharged. Now when a virus attacks a white blood cell, a virus attacks a white blood cell, when the cell is bursting, it will take bits and pieces of the cell membrane and then the cell will leak and die. So this is how viruses reproduce and that is how they cause infection. Very bad. So, let's have some assignment for today. Question one is, why are viruses considered as neither living things or non-living things? Then 1B, are there any beneficial viruses? And then question two, suggest why it is difficult to find cures for viral infections. And 2B, suggest actions that can make a person strong enough to resist viral infections. Yes, so that is the end of today's lesson on viruses. What do you think we will do in our next lesson? Still on diversity of organisms. Your guess is true, bacteria, prokaryotes. We will look at them. So for the time being, thank you and goodbye.